Okay, we have a storyteller in the house, but then I have a very, very short story. A very short story before I introduce it. There was this young boy. On his way, he came into Lagos with his bag and baggage. And then he got to somewhere. He, he was moved by the allure of movies and all of that, commercials, and he wanted to get into it. And so he went to this office for casting, went into the office, and then he was called, he was picked, and he did the job. After the job, um, the casting director went to greet his boss and went with him. And this young man saw the boss sitting down on his table like this, and was like, hello, how you doing? And the young man was like, uh, gracias, and all that. So the young man was me. <laughs> and that was my first ever TVC, and the boss we're talking about here was Mr. Femi Odubemi. You might not remember. And the place was DV Works. <laughs> that was my first ever television commercial. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You know, I'm wondering, it's an interview, I'm supposed to be asking questions, but I, I feel like I, I, I could just keep quiet and just looking at you like this. Like, I don't yeah, really have... Are you for minutes, okay. have questions? <laughs> Maybe the first thing is, let, let me get this out of the way. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> I'm on TV. <laughs> yeah, you know who that is? That is my Edito yes, basket. Yes, our ED. ED to show. Very own ED. Uh, uh, all right. He was it's telling before the show. <laughs> right, so you have to he had to. He had to. <laughs> Great right. to have you on the show, sir. I'm really happy to be here. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Oh, you're actually you guys do a great job. I love your set. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You thank, you very much. much. Yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, well, I'm dark, but if I was like, you see me blushing now. <laughs> no, yeah, you're brighter than myself, so All right. I'm free to blush. Okay, so let's go straight up into iWeb. You are a pioneer documentary filmmaker and all of that. And, you know, it's, it's a creative style of, journal, of, of TV and journalism when someone goes into filmmaking. But now, I'm starting off a film festival that celebrates... Um, documentaries and all of that. How has it been these five years of IREP so far? Well, I, it's been an exciting journey. First of all, let me just say that, you know, I'm, I'm not a pioneer, because okay. I tell you what, documentary filmmaking in Nigeria dates way back into, you know, the time of the colonialists. I mean, there's so many Nigerian filmmakers okay. that began as documentary filmmaking. Uh, filmmakers. filmmakers. In fact, documentary filmmaking it was was perhaps the most vibrant filmmaking style in Nigeria in you know in in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And and IREP is uh, one of the reasons why I, I, I you know I was one of those who founded IREP was to try to you know reawaken that consciousness. Uh, and, and in doing that, we've tried to honor those who, who, who have gone before us. So each time, you know, someone says, you know, Femi is a pioneer of documentary, I'm quick to say, ah, the pioneers oh, are plenty, yeah, yeah, you know. Many. I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but talking about IREP in five years, it's, it's really been amazing. Because I tell you what, the IREP Documentary Film Festival was really created, you know, to, to take advantage of the energy of young people. It's about young people telling their own stories. And you have to understand that documentary is such a, a powerful form of filmmaking uh, because it has a, a totally different contract with the viewer. I mean, when you make a dramatic film, the viewer expects that you know, you're trying to entertain first before you can bring up an issue. Uh, but with documentary, you're, you're trying to inform, you're trying to create debate, you're trying to provoke first and foremost, before you entertain. But it's also a very creative form. And uh, young people all over the world um, enter into filmmaking through documentaries. They enter into filmmaking um, through documentaries because it's a way, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, quick way to find your creative voice. You don't need a cost. You don't um, need a lot of money. Um, and today, with the equipment, um, you just need your camera and your laptop, and you're ready to tell your story. story. And in an environment like Nigeria, stories abound everywhere. everywhere. And like, as I say to young people, um, you are your own first story. You're living an interesting life. You're, what does it feel like to be African in the 21st century? century with all the challenges? How are you able to live here and do the amazing things that, that you do? Uh, and that's why IREP was, was started. And so it's actually been a journey where the young people, these young filmmakers, have expressed themselves, have taken over the, the vision, and really we celebrate these five years for them. <laughs> okay. um, and, and to celebrate their works, essentially. 
All right. Um, about the theme of the, this year, yes. reinventing the documentary filmmaking in a digital space. Um, most people would look at documentary and they'll say, okay, it's still the same old thing. The documentary style cannot be any different than the original. But ha, does the film festival plan to change? Yeah, how do you plan to reinvent change it? Do, um, really do, reinvent the documentary it? style completely, mm -hmm. or just keep it going as it is, but still put it out there? Well, documentary has many styles. Uh, in documentary, there is drama embedded because you can do recreations. In documentary, there is verite where you actually just let the camera speak to the, to the, to the um, story and you're not the one constructing it. Um, there are documentaries that are funny, that are insightful, that are you know, penetrating, that are investigative documentaries. If you watch television, you'll see tons and tons of different styles of documentary and it's a much harder filmmaking um, genre than drama, actually, because you have to get your facts right, right. Yeah. and you have to entertain and you have to find your audience. But in t talking about the, the subject of, of this year's IRAP, reinventing documentary in a digital space, um, what's happened is that we don't need to actually uh, uh, look for how to redo how documentary is. Uh, the digital space is reinventing it all on its so own. When you see something on, on uh, um, YouTube or Facebook where someone has used their camera phone to record a policeman taking a bribe, a documentary has occurred. Uh, he has documented what has, what has happened. He has impacted people because right there and then they're distributing. People are forwarding. People are calling attention to that incident. And, and behavior is changing because now when you... You're arrested by a policeman or last man. The first thing is looking at is your phone. And that's what documentary does. Exactly. And so documentary is being reinvented. We're not doing it. It's happening. In 2012, when we had the, um, the fuel riots and the, the, you know, the fuel lines yeah. and all of that, I mean, people were telling the stories with their phones. They were creating... I mean, before you see channels at night, before you see NTA stories at night, nice. people were way ahead of the narrative. Why? Because they were shooting what was going on with the, with the, with the demonstrations, and they were distributing it right away. Mm -hmm. That impacted. Why? Because many more people were able to avoid government propaganda. They were able to avoid lies. Yeah. They, they could, you know, um, they, could, they could create a narration of what was happening in real time. time. That's the power of the digital space. Digital space. And uh, in this, in this uh, um, IREP, what we're trying to do essentially is to interrogate that trend and to say, um, when you take young people and you take smartphones and you take a knowledge of the power and possibility of documentary, mm -hmm. what you have is the possibility of change. Mm -hmm. What you have is, is, is an environment whose development will be accelerated. What you have is a democracy where, um, where um, uh, accountability would be put in front. Uh, what you have is, is, is where you know, the ingenuity of this generation can find a voice very quickly. So it's, it's all about redefining possibilities, and I'm very excited about it. About it. Okay, so the phone lines are open. Um, as fast as possible, you can call in 080 912 uh, 3, The end number is 0814, quadruple zeros, 283, uh, and also 284. All right, now, sir, documentary is as real as it gets. It can't get realer. What do um, drama, action, feature length movies, and all of that, what can our own industry learn from? the documentary filmmaking industry? Because, you see, we do a lot of movies in, and we like, really, this, is, this can't really happen. A lot of our dramas and all of that. What do you think that they can learn from documentaries? Well, you know, the, the great thing about film industries across the world is that there is no film industry that is complete without the impact of documentary filmmaking. As I said to you earlier on, um, in, in growing film industries, uh, film, documentary is how young filmmakers find their creative voice. Okay. And why is that possible? That's possible because in documentary, number one, there is a lot of emphasis on research. There is a lot of emphasis on selecting your story. There is a lot of emphasis 
on knowing your characters. And, and there is no form of filmmaking or television that is not about characters. If it's about storytelling, it's about characters. Whether those characters are fiction or non-fiction is the difference between documentary and drama. And so that discipline of research, that discipline of knowing what story will impact emotionally with an audience, with an audience. is the first missing link when, when um, filmmakers jump directly into, into drama. Into drama. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, when I say find your creative voice, also in documentary, you, you tell the story through the camera. You don't have dialogue. You can't give dialogue to people in documentary because it has to be honest. It has to be factual. Um, and sometimes it has to be truthful. And again, fact is not truth. You know that already. Yeah. Uh, but you, you, exactly. you can use the camera to tell the story. And in drama, what I think we are evolving and, and learning is that um, the capacity to recite lines of dialogue does not equate um, acting skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm. memory skill is different from acting, acting skill. skill. And exactly. I think a lot of people who are in front of camera today just have a great memory. They can load up a lot of lines mm -hmm. and recite them. Um, but they are not listening to those lines themselves in such a way that they, they can, can actually express in their body language um, mm -hmm. what those words really mean. And I think that's where we are um, in terms of the difference. All right. Um, the latest trend nowadays for um, feature-length movies, any kind of movie or film, they become shorter, short length and everything. Do you think documentary can adapt that style of having documentaries short, very short, very short, and the story short accurate, and everything, the information is still as it is? Well, documentaries come in different durations, different length. Um, at this festival, we're showing 52 different documentaries from across the world. Um, mm -hmm. The shortest of them is seven minutes. Mm -hmm. The longest of them is maybe 90 minutes. Uh, the truth of the matter is the digital space um, ensures brevity. You yeah. have to be short, short if you need to be out there. Mm -hmm. Why? Simply because the attention span is very short. short. Mm -hmm. And because the distribution platforms themselves are, are flat uh, uh, smartphones and tablets and People want to consume these things where they are, not where you ask them to go. So they are at the bus stop. They want to quickly consume, consume. a content. content. It can't be more than 10 minutes. I mean, you know, uh, mm -hmm. they're walking, they're in the car. These are the spaces that, you know, content is consumed now. And whether you're a documentary, drama, short film, long film, whatever, you've got to adapt to what that space is demanding if that space is your place to play and distribute. Um, so there are different, different lengths already oh, in, right. in documentary film. A lot of my work in documentary is usually you know, 30 minutes. The longest I've ever done is, is maybe 70 minutes. How long was Barriga Boy? Barriga Boy is actually 30 minutes. Oh, wow. And, and, and you know, it's, it's quick and sharp, and it allows you a, a type of storytelling that is PC and, and gives the audience a chance um, to stay involved, you know, for the period of the story. Okay, so let's just round up with this. Just um, can you run us um, through the schedule of programs for the film festival? Um, for the awesome. Film festival? Um, IREP is happening this year on the 19th, with, uh, 19th to 22nd March. Okay. Um, that's Thursday to Sunday. Um, it, it's just two days away in case, you know, um, um, <laughs> you, you need that clarification. Yeah. It's happening at Freedom Park, Broad Street, Lagos. Um, it's going to be four days of film screenings, four days of panel discussions, four days of producers' roundtable, um, four days of workshops and, and, and film making uh, 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 training. Um, it does not require registration. It's free. Everything we do in IREP is free. When you get there, come 8 a.m. on Thursday and you can register and uh, you can be part of all of this. We've got a lot of films. We've got 52 films 52 screening films. and some okay. of the biggest documentary films um, from across the world is screening for the first time uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, for the workshops and the film training, uh, you have to register now because I think registration closes tomorrow and there are limited spaces. But 
It's free, so get to it if there is anything that um, you want to learn in filmmaking, um, in distribution, using your smartphone to make movies, all mm. of those kind of things are being taught. The, the uh, facilitator is Babel Mosch. Babel Mosch is from Germany. Uh, she's worked with us over the course of four years. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff with the British Council, doing a lot of stuff with Gotha Institute. We're working with the Ford Foundation, and we're very excited. Uh, about these sessions because we also have some incredible um, special guests. John Ugbe, who is the managing director of DSTV, will be giving the keynote on the first day. Mm -hmm. he, he will be talking about audience development in the digital space. We have Jean-Marie Tenno, who is one of the greatest filmmakers in Africa. He just oh, okay. came from Fespaco in Ouagadougou. Um, he will be discussing what cinema for Africa. Uh, we have Waimi Atigbi, who is one of the most creative, most brilliant uh, uh, digital designers and entrepreneurs. He will be speaking also on the first day. It's just a whole load of um, very exciting activities. Uh, activities. And a lot of filmmakers are going to be there. A lot of young people are going to be there. So please uh, come and, and be part of it. All right. We're looking forward to it. It's very interesting what you said. Thank you very much uh, for coming on the thank show. You, thank you. I hope you. some other day we'll have the whole show and we'll just have you on set and then we get to talk with you. There's a lot we need to talk you. about. You know that, sir. I thank would you. like you to tell thank us a story, too. Thank you. 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 Thank